We got spoiled with another internal SpaceX presentation by Elon Musk. In the X video, we got a bunch of Starship details, including up to Starship version 3. Yes, 3! We also got performance numbers for both version 2 and 3, and even a time frame when the first booster catch might be. A lot of channels have covered this, but we have some questions and the answers don't quite line up. Let's get you in on all the details we found, and also some things where SpaceX is bringing up more questions than answers. Let's start first with the near-term future. Later in the video, we will then move to some details and performance numbers that were revealed to be for the mid to distant future of Starship. During the talk, Elon mentioned the recent milestones achieved by the Starship teams and the upcoming Flight 4, which should hopefully be around the corner. Elon expects this to happen in May and the mission will be for the most part a lot like Flight 3, but there is a catch. Well, technically not an actual catch, but Rather a virtual catch. Yes, for Flight 4, SpaceX wants the booster to go entirely through the boost bag, entry and up to the landing on the water, simulating a catch on the chopsticks. Not only that, but Elon said that if all of this goes well, there will be a catch attempt on the next flight, Flight 5. SpaceX also released a render of what this catch would look like if it were to be attempted and, well, let's say it looks quite scary. During Flight 3, we learned the booster is supposed to ignite all of its 13 inner engines at the start and then shut down the ring of 10 engines to land on just the centermost three. We are not sure how reliable this animation is and whether to take it at heart or not, but it doesn't show that transition from 13 to 3 engines, so we obviously have to take it with a pinch of salt. The animation shows the super heavy booster approaching at a high angle of attack and slowing down near but not on top of the tower. After that, the booster flies itself in between the tower arms and lands on them. Saying it like that sounds simple, but don't be surprised if we see the first attempt going not so well. Unfortunately, Elon never talked about what actually happened with Flight 3, which means we don't really know how much work is left before Flight 4. But if all goes well with Flight 4, and it's indeed happening in May, that would mean its fifth flight could follow just a couple of months after that. So plan your summer vacations accordingly, because the first super heavy catch attempt could happen during these months. As for what will happen with the ship recovery, first up SpaceX will be trying to get the ship through re-entry. That's the goal for Flight 4. Elon said that the company wants to simulate at least two soft splashdowns in the water before trying it for real and landing back on the launch tower. That means SpaceX will need a few more tries, so a few more flights, and therefore Elon says he expects this to happen much more likely in 2025. My guess is probably next year is when we will be able to reuse Starship, but I think it's, it's, I think it's highly likely that this year we will bring Starship to, or the ship, the ship side of it, to a controlled point in the ocean and have it basically land on a virtual, virtual tower in, somewhere in the, in the Pacific or the Indian Ocean. Either way, they have for certain quite a few tries over the rest of 2024. I mean, by current pace, SpaceX could perform like five more launches this year. So a lot of time to get to this, right? Okay, now let's look more into the future. We got two important slides outlining the upcoming upgrades for Raptor and Starship. The first one shows the path from Raptor 1 to Raptor 3, the future iterations of Raptor. The other one shows the Flight 3 performance numbers Starship version 2 performance and Starship version 3 performance. Along these numbers on this slide, there are also three renders, each one representing what these iterations look like and, well, we'll deal with these a little bit later. Let's go first through the Starship performance numbers. Let's start with the payload to orbit. While this chart says NA, apparently, according to Elon during the talk, the Flight 3 Starship could have lifted 40 to 50 tons to orbit. Like, I currently Flight 3 would be around 40 or 50 tons to orbit. So as of right now, SpaceX is still far away from any performance goals of Starship. It is right now only in the ballpark of a Falcon Heavy. But it kinda makes sense, right? 
It's a production prototype. It features no weight optimization, mass reduction or any other upgrades that later vehicle would feature. We can look at the evolution of Falcon 9 as an example. In a matter of years it almost doubled its payload capacity and is partially reusable. There's also another argument to be made and that is that Starship right now is in a much earlier stage of development than even Falcon 9 was during its first flight. Additionally SpaceX is definitely trying something even harder with Starship which is full reusability. If the upper stage were not to be reused for example, you could do away with the flaps, the heat shield, you could deploy the nose cone during flight as if it were a fairing and you wouldn't need to keep the engine skirt during flight since that's there only to protect the engines during re-entry. That's a lot of mass that wouldn't be needed if just the upper stage were to be expandable and that would probably translate into some sizable payload performance upgrades. Of course, that's not the goal of Starship though. This rocket has to be fully reusable while still throwing over 100 tons of payload into orbit. So that is why SpaceX is proposing Starship version 2 and then version 3. Before jumping to those, there's also something interesting about the Flight 3 numbers. The ship propellant load corresponds with what we have thought about for a while, but the booster propellant load is about 100 tons less than what SpaceX website has been indicated for a while. This would imply that Booster 10 was only at 97% capacity instead of 100%. Or it could be a typo. At the same time, the thrust for both booster and ship appears to be much lower than previously advertised. According to SpaceX website, the current version of Raptor 2 produces 230 tons of thrust for the sea level configuration and 258 tons of thrust for the vacuum configuration. That would mean that with 33 Raptor 2 sea level engines on the booster, it should produce a total of 7590 tons. But the performance light says 7130 tons, which is equivalent to 260 tons of thrust per Raptor. This likely indicates that on flight 3 the Raptor had been throttling down to about 95% instead of going at full power. A similar thing occurs when calculating this for the ship. With three sea level engines and three Raptor vacuum optimized engines, we should get a thrust of well over 1450 tons. However, the slide mentions 1250 tons of thrust for the ship, which would correspond to an average of 208 tons of thrust per engine. That's even lower than on the booster. Not only is it a low number, but that's also the average of thrust. Since the RVACs are optimized for the vacuum of space, they should produce more thrust than the sea level raptors while firing in space. So the thrust of the sea level raptors had to be even lower than the average of 208 tons. Add to all of this the fact that the raptor engines, whether sea level or vacuum optimized, should be more powerful in the vacuum of space than at sea level. It's hard to know whether these numbers are correct or not, but if they are, this would mean that the engines on both Booster 10 and Ship 28 were throttled down quite a lot compared to what we should expect. This could have been done to reduce the load on the Raptors, treating them more nicely during the flight so that they could survive the whole trip and not blow up. However, this impacts quite significantly the performance, so the thrust numbers combined with all the stuff mentioned before, well, let's say it kind of starts to make sense that Flight 3 was not that capable after all. Now, let's go to version 2 and 3, which should hopefully solve a lot of these performance shortfalls. We have already known from a while ago that version 2 is planned to debut soon, as Elon mentioned a while ago that the ship we have seen built so far, aka up to ship 32, are the last of version 1. This means version 2 is coming later this year or early next year at the latest and in fact we have started to see some hardware that already looks different, we'll talk about that later. Version 3, a much more significant change, could probably happen later down the line but Elon did not mention timelines. Version 2 aims to get over double the payload capacity of the current version with a payload capacity of north of 100 tons. That would mean Starship could finally go back to the original performing targets, but that's not where upgrades will end. Starship version 3 aims to get to up to 200 tons into orbit. It's a crazy vehicle with some even more crazy changes in the hardware. One thing that will happen and that becomes very obvious when one looks at the renders is that the ship and booster will be stretched and therefore will carry more propellant. 
According to the numbers on the slide, the booster will go from 3,300 tons to first 3,650 on version 2 and then 4,050 on version 3. That's roughly 23% increase in propellant. The ship gets even crazier, going from 1,200 tons currently to 1,500 tons on version 2 and then 2,300 tons on version 3. That's almost double the amount of propellant than the current version. And I mean, look at it. It's huge. Actually, it's increasing its size by 19.5 meters. That's a six story building on top of the current ship size. And if you remember that a big chunk of this is the payload bay, you can imagine it almost doubling its tank size with this 19.5 meter increase. Increasing the size and propellant capacity means adding more rings and changing the location of the tank bulkheads. From the current version to version 2, the ship gets stretched by 1.8 meters, which is equivalent to just an extra ring added. That's not a lot of stretching considering the propellant capacity grows by 300 tons. One ring has an approximate volume of 116 cubic meters, which would translate to either 140 tons of densified liquid oxygen or 50 tons of densified liquid methane. This means that there will be more propellant capacity than what's being added, which means propellant tanks will have to grow up into the payload bay of Starship. We have already seen development hardware for version 2 of the ship that indicates the payload bay door will be a lot closer to the forward dome of the ship. Up until this presentation, there was the possibility this was because the door was being moved down closer to this forward dome, but seeing these numbers it appears it's actually the other way around. The tanks on the ship will instead move up to leave way more for propellant on the ship. Due to how close the door will be to the forward dome, it's even possible this dome will be a flat version instead of the current more bulky version. In fact, during Elon's presentation, there was a video that shows a series of barrel sections inside the Star Factory. And we can see a two ring section on the right hand side that has a flat dome on top. It could be that this is either a development or a production barrel for an upcoming ship's forward dome section. Definitely very interesting and I guess we might have to get even deeper into this because there's a lot to talk about in terms of future production. Of course the booster will see a very similar thing. In its case the booster will see an additional 1.3 meters added to it which is about the same height as one short ring. Short rings are a rare type of starship rings that are only present on the aft section of super heavy boosters. As their name indicates these are shorter than the standard size rings being about 4 feet tall instead of 6 feet tall or 1.4 meters and 1.8 meters for those of us who like metric. This seems not enough to explain the increase in propellant capacity and there's really no payload bay section on super heavy to expand into. So we'll have to wait and see what the actual version 2 of the booster looks like. Version 3 of the ship and booster would gain the equivalent of another 10 rings and 4 rings respectively which would make the full stack a total of 150 meters. An absolute beast of a rocket. This time the stretch does seem to match with the potential gain in propellant capacity and in fact for the ship it would mean a few of the rings might go to gain space for the payload bay so that's good. In general these renders look quite off-putting to say the least and not because version 3 looks quite weird with the ship being almost as tall as the booster but rather because a lot of the hardware seen in these renders either doesn't make sense or we haven't seen at all. For example the grid fins appear to be attached directly to the tankage which either means the motors for them would go inside of the tank or the grid fins are just fixed. Sure SpaceX is known for making crazy changes but does this sound logical to you? The hot staging interface also doesn't look like anything we have seen. If we are truly seeing SpaceX shift into production of Starship version 2 at Starbase then that means we should stop seeing the same type of booster forward dome section that we have seen for version 1. If you look at the render it doesn't look like version 2 and 3 will use the same type of forward dome section. Except we keep seeing that design over and over again. In fact there was a barrel section like that on the video from within the Star Factory that was shown in the presentation. So this could mean that either the render is wrong and Starship 2 will not have that type of hot staging interface or we may just not see a version 2 of the booster for a while. I mean think about it. It could be that SpaceX may start flying only version 2 of the ship 
but on booster that are version 1 and then have both stages eventually be version 2. A third option is that both things are true. Perhaps version 2 of the booster won't look anything like this, but we also might not see it fly for alongside version 2 of the ship. We will see what happens. Perhaps the least surprising things of these renders are the forward flaps on the ship, which seem different from the current version. We can also see a modified aft section for the booster, with rather weird interfaces on it. Just like the forward dome sections, we have yet to see aft sections like these, so it adds weight to the theory that SpaceX may not fly version 2 of the booster for a while. If these are indeed new interfaces, they might also need a type of mount, and we know SpaceX seems to be in the middle of changing launch mount design, so perhaps we won't see this version 2 of the booster until that's done. Again, to just to be very clear, this is pure speculation based on this render, which could still be wrong or not describe completely how the end product will look like. At the aft end of the booster, we can also see a clear lack of the engine shields, which is an upgrade that SpaceX wants to do for the next version of Raptor. Raptor 3. In order to launch a heavier rocket, SpaceX needs a more powerful engine, and that's what Raptor 3 is all about. On the slide about this new version of Raptor, we can see a render of what it looks like and some nice thrust numbers. However, no data yet on specific impulse. On the slide, Raptor 3 is stated to achieve 280 tons of thrust for the sea level version and 306 tons of thrust for the vacuum optimized version, aka the RVAC. The increased thrust is achieved by increasing the pressure in the main combustion chamber. More pressure on the combustion chamber means a lot more pressure upstream in the turbo pumps. We can see on the render of Raptor 3 that a lot of hardware has been simplified and a lot of the flanges between manifolds have been removed as well. You can already see how much more simplified Raptor 2 was compared to Raptor 1, so Raptor 3 being even more simplified isn't a surprise. Elon mentioned during the presentation that this simplified design was thanks to removing certain unneeded components and integrating some others, like cooling lines, with other components within the engines. That gives the engine a sleeker look and a more compact design, allowing it to fly without needing shielding for its flight, which is what we were referring to before. But that is actually what Raptor 3 would look like. It looks like Raptor 3 looks like it's missing a bunch of parts. Uh, but actually those parts have either been deleted or they've been integrated into the system. How does this translate for the rocket? Well, on the performance slide we can see how the introduction of Raptor 3 increases substantially the overall thrust of each stage. On the booster, the number of engines appears to stay the same with 33 engines. While this is not directly confirmed, there is no special field on the booster engine numbers, like there is with ship engine numbers. So safe to assume the number here stays consistent for now. The thrust will still increase though, from 7130 tons on the current version to 8240 tons on the thrust of version 2. This would translate to an average of 250 tons of thrust per engine. This kinda implies that even for version 2, Raptor will not be fired at its full capacity since Raptor 3 is advertised to be 280 tons of thrust. It's that or version 2 doesn't use Raptor 3 and instead it uses some upgraded Raptor 2 version that can go up to 250 tons of thrust. Maybe Raptor 2.5? We did have a Raptor 1.5 at one point, so who knows? For version 3 the booster jumps to an astonishing 10,000 tons of thrust, which would be an average of about 300 tons per engine. That's well above Raptor 3 levels, so could this be a hypothetical Raptor 4? Or maybe an upgraded Raptor 3? Elon did mention in the presentation that he wants Raptor to eventually produce 330 tons of thrust, so that means we may see an eventual upgrade beyond Raptor 3. And I think ultimately we'll probably, the booster engines, we'll, we'll aim to get the booster engines over 330 tons of thrust, which would mean 10,000 tons of total thrust at liftoff. On the ship, the number of engines stays the same until version 3. This is when we will see the long-awaited change to having 6 RVAX engines on the ship. This means that, for the time being, upcoming ships will still have 3 RVAC engines and will have to wait a bit longer for 6. In terms of thrust, version 2 will see the ship go from 1250 tons of thrust to 1600 tons of thrust. That's an average of 266 tons of thrust per engine, which just like the booster, implies either an improved version of Raptor 2 
or throttled down version of Raptor 3, which will be used. This is a rather modest increase of thrust compared to the big jump that the ship goes through for version 3. It will go up to 2700 tons of thrust. To put this into perspective, this is 16% more thrust than Falcon Heavy. Yes, Falcon Heavy. The second stage of Starship version 3 could be even more powerful than none other than Falcon Heavy. It's crazy. Did you wonder why they are building a flame trench for ships at Massey's? Now you know why. As you can see, we have learned a lot on this presentation and I'm sure we could have probably dived even deeper into a lot of these numbers and on the renders and whatnot. However, it's worth keeping in mind that a lot of this is very notional. Digging even deeper than this very early in the process may not be very helpful, so we'll probably wait until we can see more of this development. Now, while we have learned stuff, there are so many open questions now. We kinda touched on some of these questions along in the video like, is version 2 of the booster coming at the same time as version 2 of the ship? When is version 3 gonna come online? What's the progress on Raptor 3 development? How many do they have in inventory? Will the stretch rocket need any new pad infrastructure? What is the reason for the new forward flap design? Is the hot staging ring really gonna look like this? Is the booster really gonna have these structures on the aft section and if so, what are they? Quick disconnect ports? Hold downs? See. These are a lot of questions. Sadly, we are not yet able to answer them based on the available information and, well, all we can do is speculate for now. Also, it's worth remembering that we're gonna see lots of different variants of the ship like Depot, Tanker, Starlink, Human Landing System, Crew and a lot more. So these will also have their own numbers as well. What do you think? Are you excited about version 2 and version 3 of Starship? Do you have any more questions that we didn't address in this video that you want to discuss? Let's discuss them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.